Hi beautiful people, welcome to my channel. My name is Georgia, for those of you who are new and to my regular subscribers, welcome back. So as you can tell from the title, we are gonna discuss, we're gonna do a recap and a review of Love and Marriage Huntsville season two, episode 20. And um, in this episode, we are looking at some of the scenes that was left on the editing room floor. There were things that the producers did not find would um, facilitate good conversations throughout the season. And um, they decided to cut it out, but now they're making an episode showing what was left. And these are all clips from season one as well as season two. In total, they, they did 40 episodes of Love and Marriage Huntsville and um, these are scenes that were left on the cutting room floor. Usually I do my review and my recap in um, sequential order but I'm going to be a little bit all over the place because I didn't really take that much notes and there were some things that I'm not going to mention but um, we're going to try and cover as much as possible. Hopefully I remember most of everything. Um, so first off, we get to meet, um, executive producer Carlos King, and then he goes in to tell us, you know, how the show originated and, um, it came about where he was pitched the show by Melody and Martel, Martel Holt as a, um, something like a HG, HGTV where you have the flip this house fixer up a house whatever and um Carlos said he liked the fact that you know Melody and Martel were a great looking couple and he wanted to know if they had some friends so um throughout meeting Marcel and Tisha they found them to also be very interesting and also Mel um, Maurice and Kimmy they found to be interested and that's when they heard about the comeback group which is the initial reason why i started watching that's how i got to know the show as far as you know that's what piqued my interest the fact that i saw three couples getting ready to do something positive in huntsville alabama and i'm like okay this seems interesting because i do watch reality tv and it there are times where it turns me off because mostly everything is all about drama, fighting, calling each other out of their names and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, I need to see something positive. And then when I saw the preview for this show, I'm like, all right, something finally good. I'm going to be able to learn some things from these people because everybody is in real estate. And so I'm sure I'm going to learn a little bit from each and every one of them. So now Carlos goes to tell us that just before they shot the pilot to um, pitch it to networks, Mel goes in to tell him that, listen, Martel has been, you know, unfaithful in our marriage and she wasn't sure she wanted to film the show. So he convinced her and she trusted him. Like she said, he convinced her to still shoot the pilot and, you know, let's take it one day at a time. And he said he promised he would be there to hold her hand through the whole thing. So with that, Melody, like she said, trusted him and they went ahead and shot the pilot. And as you know, this is what came from the show. As you guys know, like I said, some reality shows are scripted, and in this show, you could see and you could see and feel the raw emotions amongst everybody. You could see it in the conversations that were being had. You could see it on the facial expressions that these people were going through what they were going through, and it wasn't just to put on for television. So that's what kept me interested in the show, and that's why I actually. Um, like watching it because like I said this is real reality TV all right so let's get into some of the um, let's get into some of the scenes that were left out of the show and as you guys know like I said I have my notes I didn't take too much but we're gonna go through it and um, we're gonna try to touch in as much as possible so like I said we get to meet the executive producer Carlos King we also meet Brent and Angela and they were also producers on the show so um the first scene that they take us through is when um if I remember correctly is that it like I said I didn't take too much notes we see where Martel and Marceau have a conversation this is after we found out 
that um, Martel has been unfaithful in the marriage and he and Melody are going through what they go through where Martel tries to deflect and also bring um, Marcel into his drama that's going on. So this is where we find out where he made the statement that yeah, you're cheating as well. You have 20 women, the 20 women we don't know about. So they show where Martel and Marcel almost came to blows because they met up in, I think it was, it looked like a house that they were furnishing, not furnishing, that they were renovating and getting ready to um, to sell. And um, that's when Martel came at him and was talking about the 20 women. And then Marcel was like, whoa, let's not go there. You're just trying to pull people into what's going on in your marriage and try to pull me per se into what's going on in your marriage and that's not what it's about so okay martel didn't um further that what he tries to do now is tell marcel like listen you need me because when we formed this company scolt which is a combination of their two last name scott and holt um you were in financial ruins. You told me you were about six weeks or six months into your savings. And after that, you won't have anything to um, to take care of your family. And that's how we, we build you out. Melanie and I build you out. So they were going back and forth for a little while till they almost came to blows. And Carlos had to step in and tell them, listen, none of this is usable. This conversation isn't helping anyone. Um, it's not going anywhere. So let's just stop because it's getting to the point where you guys are going to come to blows and, um, you know, that's not good. So I think that's where their friendship started to break down until later on we saw where they try to make up. And, um, after that scene, I believe Marcel went home and he had a conversation with Tisha where, you know, he, he brings up that Martel tried to say he had 20 women and he was out there um, stepping out on his marriage and stuff like that. So that was one of the scenes that was left on the floor. I didn't know that Martel, Martel and Marcel almost had a physical altercation. And even after that, Marcel tried to, you know, lighten the mood where he was. They were walking out of the house. And I guess Martel already know his personality because... From he said the first two words, Marcel, Martel was like, don't even come at me with that. I don't want to hear no jokes or anything. But what happened, Marcel's like, come, do me a favor, bro. Do me a favor. Can you take this thing that, take out this thing that's inside my, that's in my back? I have a knife sticking out of my back. You think you could pull it out for me? And Martel was not having it. He was like, like right now, I'm not in the mood for no jokes or whatever. All right. Now we have um, another scene where we have... Um, Melody and Tisha, we did see a little bit of that scene right there where Melody was trying to tell Tisha, listen, um, you may want to call a babysitter and try to find out where your husband is, especially when he's coming home at five and five and six o'clock in the morning. Where's he been all night? Get yourself a babysitter and roll up on him. So that was a point where Melody straight up was telling him, listen, telling her, listen, your husband is out there cheating on you. And um, Tisha at that point was like, listen, you just want somebody to be as miserable as you are. That's why you're coming at, at me with that. And I know my husband isn't cheating. So again, I think that's when Mel decided, like, listen, I'm not going to tell this woman anything else. Let me just deal with my situation on my own and deal with my husband on my own and let her figure out what's going on with her. Also, we found out that, remember when Melody had the... Um, she had the la launch party for Embrace that Tisha, she tried to come there to, you know, make amends somehow, at least get a conversation with Mel and Mel took it up on herself to ask the security who was, you know, there for the venue, was there for the event to escort Tisha out. It was not the producers who asked, um, her to do that. She took it up on herself to ask Tisha to leave. And then there was, of course, where scenes were cut, where we saw Tisha in the car, you know, crying because that hurt, as it should. I think in that um, event, Mel Melody should have just left her and let her be there. Ignore her if you want to. She had people who she was, she was mingling with. She had um, Kimmy, who also walked her out to the car. And there were also other prominent business people 
from Huntsville who were there that um you know Tisha saw and all of this played out in front of them so that was quite embarrassing to her and I don't think that it was necessary for Mel to do that she could have just left Tisha and let her um just be there mingling but not have anything to say to her but to have her escorted out by security that hurt that would hurt me too and again that's where um the relationship between Mel and Tisha again kept crumbling kept crumbling until finally in the end of the season we see where they try to make up and let's see what season three brings regarding that relationship now we also spoke about Tisha and Kimmy where there was a scene that um I remember if you know that remember the title Kimmy in the middle it was a scene where Melody and Tisha was going back and forth and Tisha felt that Kimmy needed to be more on her side and um, Kimmy wanted to just not be involved. Now we get to find out that um, in season one when Maurice's ex-wife came to visit Kaiwa, Tisha and, um, and Kaiwa had a scene together that wasn't shown. We didn't know that Kaiwa and Tisha are friends. And then Kimmy goes to tell us about a time where I believe it was Maurice's mother who graduated and they had to go to Florida for the graduation. Um, Tisha was there, Kyle was there, and there was a, a part where Kimmy walked out of the room and Tisha made the comment now that the elephant has left the room or left the building. And Tisha did not come back and tell Kimmy what happened. She just kept it to herself. And then Kimmy felt that, you know, if you want me to be loyal to you, you also have to um, show me that you're, you're, you're loyal to me. It cannot be one-sided. And she brought that up to Tisha, and that was a scene that we didn't see. So for Kimmy to stay out of things, I understand exactly why she's not doing it. Like, why should I go hard for you when you're not willing to do the same for me? So that's Kimmy's view on, um, that's her view on the relationship with her and Tisha. And then also regarding the mansion that is being built, is Kimmy going to move in? She already says she doesn't want any part of it. She's like, it's just too much Scots in one place for me. So that's another thing that we need to address in um, season three. I hope is that's another thing that I hope will be addressed not we have to address i hope will be addressed in season three also now the relationship between kimmy and destiny we have seen towards the end of the season where it has gotten better but then we see a deleted scene we remember where everybody broke because of the situation that we're in so they took some time off and now they came back came back to film at that town meeting where maurice brought all of the business people together in hopes well, in preparation or in um, getting ready to make sure that they come together as a better community and start to mentor the young people. Remember, they had that scene right outside um, by the water fountain. Well, Mo, um, Kimmy and Destiny had a scene where they brought up that the chicken conversation, the fact that Kimmy says she didn't know Destiny and LeBaric. All she know is that he makes good chicken. That was brought back up again at that um, town meeting. And they put that on the, um, they cut that out. And I think it's a great idea that they did because that whole thing between Kimmy and Destiny was not making any sense. That was just going on and on and on and, on, and there was no reason for it. But now come to find out that Destiny plays a more important role. Imagine, we haven't even seen LeBaric for the rest of the season. We saw him on like one, two, three episodes and that's it. We want to know where is LeBaric Destiny? We haven't seen him in any scenes with you. However, you are being a great friend to Melody. I like the fact that you are um, you're level-headed and you're impartial you are making sure that you aren't really leaning too much into um one person because you're friends with both melody and martel even though you've known martel longer you're holding martel accountable for his actions and you're making sure that you're trying to bring everybody together you try to bring melody and tisha together you're trying to bring martel and melody together as far as you know let's address what's going on let's get through this let's move on the fact that you're being a great friend to both is really good and because that was leaning 
leaning it was just resting on maurice's shoulder all by himself he was trying to make sure that he was there for everybody and kept a positive energy going and now that he has some help from you destiny that's great so i just hope you keep that up in season three and we want to see Leberic, and if he's not coming, we want to see with somebody else. We just need more scenes with Destiny in it. So producers, if you're watching this video, make sure that Destiny is a big part of next season. We need to see more of her. I just love her attitude as far as everything goes. She is, um, she's good. She's good for the show. And um, let me see, what else was addressed in the show? Um... That was just, um, I didn't write down any more notes, so I think that was the major scenes that were deleted that um, we saw. And the fact that the show started out where we thought it would be all about, um, you know, them rebuilding North Huntsville, which we still see a lot of. The fact that their personal lives are now intertwined a lot more than we expected in the show. We get to see everything that's happening. So for season three, let me see what I want to see addressed in season three. I want to see how um, Jalen has grown in season three. He needs also to be a major part of the show. I want to see how he has been doing as far as being the general manager for Black. Great, um, great call and keeping Black open. Marceau and Tisha. The people in the community, I think, need a space like that to go to to um you know even though you may not be at 100 percent capacity yet the fact that people have some place to go to for a couple of hours to get away to get out of the house and you know just um relax a little bit because this time that everybody is in is very stressful so to have some place to go that's a great idea um let's see how Jalen has grown into his role as general manager hopefully in season three we'll get to see Jalen flip at least one house the fact you know he wants to be in real estate so let's see if he's able to to buy fix up and sell at least one one home and um as far as martel and melody are concerned i want to see how the show goes as far as filming them separately because everybody started out as couples now that there are uh, the divorce is final and they've gone their separate way let's see how we are able to film them and still keep it positive as much as possible for the children of course we want to see how melody has um changed or has grown we already know that she has her single out she has her master class that she teaches regarding real estate so yeah we see her on her way already we want to see what martel is martel we want to see what martel is doing next now that he and melody are not in business together anymore i mean i'm not sure if they kept anything that's going to be um you know financially beneficial to both of them so i want to see that happen i want to see how marceau and tisha are getting along and we still want to see some of miss wonder not too much of miss wonder but we want to see some more of miss wonder because she does spice things up so we want to see more of miss wanda and um who else? Of course, Kimmy and Maurice with their positive self. Always, always, always. We just want to see what is different going forward in season three. So I look forward to the next season. Okay, it was told to us that there isn't, there will, will not be a reunion, which is understandable. You know, everything that's happening, there won't be a reunion. So we're just going to have to wait around and see what happens in season three. So far, season one and two has been wonderful. Like I said, it is so raw and real that you could tell that there's nothing scripted in here and um it's just refreshing to see because everything else out there have some script to it from the way you see it is something it's not it's not real it's not as um genuine as it could be so that is it for this review of um love and marriage huntsville the deleted scenes let's call it that and um until next season, season three, take care of yourselves and your family. Of course, watch my other videos here on um, YouTube. And there are things happening beside the scene, behind the scenes 
that are playing out on social media that if I need to make a video regarding that I will regarding Marceau and Martel and stuff there are some bloggers that are going after them they're getting the stories and they're putting it out there so I'll keep watching to see what happened and see if anything is addressed or you know let's see how it is but until season three guys you take care of yourselves and your family and hopefully we'll be all be out of this situation pretty soon until then like i said take care of yourselves and your family and as always thanks for watching okay bye bye